guys, what's up? It's Kinsey and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. So, I've been thinking a lot about like good buys, bad buys, ways I really did a great job spending my money, ways I have just thrown my money away. Um, and I wanted to share them with you guys. I love watching these videos. I think Monica Church has done such a good job. Lindsay Hughes has done such a good job. Whoever first made it, I'll try to figure it out because I know someone probably first made this video. If you guys know, please let me know and I'll link them down below. I just thought it was such a good idea. So, I made a little cute list on my iPad Pro on the GoodNotes app, love that thing, of my best and my worst financial decisions in my 20s. I'm only 22 to preface this, but anyways, some of these are actual like purchases, some of these are things that I did, um, like, you know, you'll see what I mean. If I can link to any of these, I'll have them all linked down below. Okay, I'm gonna start off with the worst, just to, you know, start off on a great foot. I remember when I first moved to LA, and my dad was like, you, to telling me and pretty much Molly, he's like, you really wanna move into a furnished apartment, we like, don't spend all the money on the furniture, blah, blah, blah. And of course, I was like, no, dad, I know what I want. Like, I need my apartment to look good, blah, blah, blah. We ended up spending all this money on, like, Ikea furniture and whatever. And, like, yeah, maybe that isn't the most expensive, but you end up buying stuff that you don't love and that you end up just trashing. And then on top of that, you end up having to move it at the end. It would have been so much smarter, my first apartment, or even like my first couple to just move into a furnished place because I don't have to buy furniture that I don't like. I don't have to like pay for movers in that sense. I don't have to own all this stuff. You're more tied down when you own a lot of furniture too. Um, so goes to show your parents are pretty much always right, which is really annoying. My first best decision that I ever made, this one kind of goes without saying, but I feel like my MacBook was such a good decision. More specifically, Apple has a part on their website where you can buy refurbished MacBooks. One of my friends showed me this, and so they actually, they're guys and they know everything about Apple. Um, they found the laptop that I have now for me, and I saved like a lot of money. I feel like most of us probably really need a MacBook, depending on what you do for school and work. Um, obviously, it's a big part of my job and my school because I'm an online school, but more specifically, the Apple refurbished part of the website because the laptop is perfectly fine, and I ended up getting a better laptop than I would have probably been able to afford before um, for a cheaper price. So that is a really good hack that I learned. Also, I think just anything that kind of invests more back into my career, because like I invest in a MacBook and then I'm able to like make a lot more money on the MacBook than the MacBook was worth. Just kind of investing more in your career to like better your craft, better your service or your product or your video or whatever that might be. I think those have always been good lies with the camera I'm filming on right now. Um, I'll link all my equipment down below if any of you guys are interested in that But I think that that was that's always a good buy because if it's really worth it and It's really gonna up my like, quality or up whatever it might be. Um, that's always worth it Number two you guys are all gonna laugh at me for this one. So when I first got Coco I hired this dog trainer and I don't think it was necessarily the dog trainers fault But I think I was definitely taken advantage of because I was young so I paid I don't even, I literally paid like well over a thousand dollars for the stupid dog trainer that would come to our house. I like, I hate saying that. Um, but I don't think necessarily the issue, I mean, yes, that's extremely expensive for dog training. And I thought this was going to be like a really great thing, whatever. Had it been a good trainer and had it actually like, you know, really worked. And part of that was like me not following up on everything, whatever. I think it would have been worth it. But like everything that she learned, I could have just taught her. And... The trainer ended up like I paid half up front. Basically, the trainer was just like a little bit sketchy, but she had really good reviews and like people I knew had used her. Um, but yeah, that was definitely a, that was a stupid buy because I could have just done so much better. And yeah, I mean, Coco is like a great dog. She's definitely not the most trained dog in the world, but yeah, that was a bad decision. Number two, my Keurig. Okay. This has probably saved me so much money. I mean, do I get Starbucks out all the time? Absolutely. That is not a good idea. I'm aware. But I think my Keurig, I'm just thinking from the standpoint of like saving money and my most used thing. I make like two cups of coffee or I, I use my Keurig at least twice a day, whether it be for coffee or teas or whatever. Um, I also love my Nespresso, but I'm just like not like equipped enough. I don't know enough still about my Nespresso. It like intimidates me even though it shouldn't. So I would say my Keurig just because I've gotten so much use out of it. I use it every single day and it's just the best thing ever. I actually just got the Keurig Mini. I don't know if you guys can see it back there, but I love that one. It's really cute. It's really small. If you guys are in a dorm room or like a smaller apartment, you have a bunch of roommates, I would recommend that one. Number three. Okay. I'm going to say Postmates. I'm not going to say food delivery as a whole because I actually don't agree with that, but Postmates. 
Oh my gosh, the amount of fees Postmates puts on food delivery is absurd. You look at that app on any given day, and like the other day I was trying to order something that was gonna be like $25, and then it was like 52 with fees, like unreal. They put, they're, it's just like way more expensive than any other food delivery app I've ever used. Obviously Postmates is like the first one, so I would always use that. And I just wasted so much money. Like, Okay, my next best buy, would be investment pieces. I know some of you guys will probably disagree with me, but I am really one for buying one thing that is more expensive and nicer. Not always more expensive, but just like a better quality item than I am buying 15 things to find it. Like, let's say you want this certain denim jacket. Let's say this jacket is like $300, right? And then you're like, oh, okay, I don't want to spend um, that much money on a denim jacket, understandably. So you go and you buy the cheaper version. So for me personally, when I do that, I will go find like a dupe, something that's similar or whatever. It still isn't exactly what I want. And this is not for every single item. These are just for like the investment pieces that are worth it to me. And then I will go buy one. That one's not perfect. So I spend like a, like, let's say I spend $90 on that one. Then I go buy another one. That one's still not perfect. Then I go buy another one. That one's still not perfect. Over time, I end up spending more money and wasting more product than if I were to just invest in that piece. So I think, for example, like my gold hoops that I wear from Jennifer Fisher, these hoops are like $300. Obviously, really expensive. I am someone who, I love clothes, I love products, I love lifestyle stuff. Like for example, the Aritzia crew neck, I have so many of them now, but those are the perfect fit for me. So comfortable, great quality, and they're like $80 a crew neck. That's ridiculous, I know, but I wear them all the time. They're the most worn thing I have in my wardrobe, 100%. And on top of that, I would buy crewnecks before and I just kept buying some that I didn't really like, I didn't love them, whatever. And then I would end up spending more than $80. Does that make sense? So for me personally, it's worth it to invest in fewer quality pieces than it is to just go buy a bunch of other stuff that's like not great, you know? The other worst financial um, decision I've done would be to not invest. I like have barely invested at all. And I don't know how to say this, but I've been making money since I was like 16. Like above what like you would get when I was working at like a pizza shop before. Like I was making more money doing YouTube than I was making at like my normal high school jobs and stuff. So at this point you would think I would have like, you know, made better financial decisions and like really started to invest in stuff and I really haven't. That's something that I need to do. Um, and I feel like I've really missed out on it. It's like such a stupid thing that I haven't done. Um, so that's another bad financial decision. Five, okay, this is a really good one. Um, something that I've really have Feel like has been a really good financial decision would be buying vintage so if you guys have followed me you would know that recently a lot of the bags actually pretty much every single designer bag that i own i've either bought like vintage or i've bought from like a resale shop um and it's just always the better idea i know that this is probably very unrelatable because not everyone in the world loves designer bags like Bags are just something that I really, 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 really love. And I think if you work hard and it's like makes sense and it's okay, then like buy it. If that's something that you like still don't agree with, totally fine. I don't want this video to be like crazy. But like even looking at this from like a standpoint of thrifting with like clothes and stuff that are just like way cheaper, um, which I also do on like Instagrams a lot, on like Instagram accounts and stuff a lot. But I get these really great bags that are like way cheaper. There's this one Instagram, Dreaming of Designer, Daydreaming of Designer. I'll link it down below. I don't know why I'm blanking on the name right now. That's where my like little Dior saddlebag is. The Real Real is really great. I have like multiple bags from them. Um, I actually got another bag too from Lord Nordstrom. I was in Nordstrom. Nordstrom Last Call. Um, so it's like a mix of thrifting and buying secondhand. Um, it's just like a better move. It's better for the environment and it's less expensive So if you're just someone who like has a little more expensive taste just in the realm of like bags or whatever um, Buying secondhand. I think just buying secondhand for clothes as well is obviously a really good idea I love I have a few Instagram accounts that I follow that basically like thrift for you so it's like a depop but on an Instagram and I bought so many things from them that I love like cool like crewnecks like vintage older like Super Bowl crewnecks and stuff like that Hi, rent in LA. Now that I'm out of LA, I will tell you guys what I was spending in my one bedroom. Not the place that I was just, the, not the place that I still have in LA. That one actually, my rent is way cheaper there. So that's fine. My rent, when I had my one bedroom apartment in downtown Los Angeles was two, was $2,750 a month. That is like more than what I'm paying in this townhouse. Obviously I'm in Texas, but like Dallas, Mortgages are actually not Dallas like property like obviously Texas property is cheaper But it's not as cheap as it once was so I'm paying I paid more for my one-bedroom apartment than I'm now paying to own 
a two bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage with a rooftop townhouse in Dallas. Um, which obviously part of that is a price that you're gonna pay for living in LA. That's just like how it is. And then second, I lived in like a really, really bougie apartment. I could have done it so much cheaper. Like I had crazy security. It was so nice. It was beautiful. And it was so much fun. Like it was really, really great. Also keep in mind, I work from home. So like part of that is an office, but like still so, so expensive. Like that is throwing money down the drain. Next one, my Amazon Prime account is like one of another best purchase I've ever made. I prime things every single day guys i really honestly god think i do i have amazon prime box that shows my house every day i don't even run errands i literally just order everything on amazon prime because most of the time it's cheaper on amazon and i'm not paying for delivery so that is just something i've had for forever i mean i used my parents in high school and like you know i got kicked off that account and now i have my own it is definitely one of the best financial decisions i've ever made because obviously no delivery and then the second thing would be saving time like if I'm working all day or something, let's say like I don't really want to run to the store and I don't need it that urgent, I'll just order on Amazon and I also save money because it's typically cheaper on Amazon. My next worst would be not budgeting. I still to this day don't budget. Like that is in, it's like embarrassing. I literally have to figure something out. It's really ridiculous. So that's another bad decision. Okay, so the next best decision, you guys will not be surprised, but it is my air fryer. Oh my gosh, guys. The air fryer was the best decision ever because I cook, I think you can maybe see it back there. No, probably not. Um, I cook so much more now that i have an air fryer i love cooking like it's actually like one of my favorite things to do but i make salmon all the time i'm healthier because of my air fryer and i cook more because of my air fryer and it's just overall better my air fryer was hands down best purchase of last year going into like my entire 20s okay so another bad decision was i feel like i just spent so much money on food i know everyone and their mother has but just spending so much money on food always i don't even want to like look and find out i mean i actually know because i've tracked it um disturbing so i think just spending so much money on food out because cooking is like one a really fun hobby and two healthier better o overall i love cooking um but i'm also like i love like the experience of going out and eating with friends i think that's important but i think just on days when like i for sure was just like by myself and i could have for sure just made food at home and i ordered or i went out and i grabbed something when like you know what i'm saying if it wasn't like a social event there's just like no need okay my other best decision that i ever made was i went to a very inexpensive college so i moved to la a little bit early so that i can get in state so my school was like a thousand dollars a year for my first two years and then even after that my schooling was is well it went down a little bit because i don't have a site fee anymore I don't actually know what it is exactly this semester. It's just cheaper than what I was paying. I think overall my entire college career was like under 25,000 total, which in comparison to people who are spending $50,000 a year, like that's really inexpensive. I have no student loans, I have no debt because I chose to go to a cheaper school. I didn't choose to do that for financial reasons. That's just like where I wanted to go. But I feel like I really lucked out in that sense because now that I'm older, I feel like if I wanted to go to like a big whatever four year like huge university that's like super expensive, I would have just said it because I was really stubborn and I wouldn't have listened to my parents being like, oh, there's so many student loans, whatever. Now that I'm older and I'm seeing all my friends be affected by student loans, I'm like, oh my god, I'm so grateful that my school is so much cheaper because I literally cannot even imagine getting out of school. Like you're, it's just like it sounds like I can't imagine because it sounds so awful, but I was able to like pay all that because it was not as expensive. Obviously. That amount of money is a lot of money, but in comparison to how much a lot of other schools cost, like I feel like that was a good decision. Okay, I think overall another bad decision I've made is just not comparing prices as much. I grew up in Texas, gas prices were not that expensive, so, and they still aren't, they're like literally right now it's under $2, God bless. But um, I didn't really like check gas prices all the time because they were just all pretty cheap. And then I moved to LA and I kind of carried on the same habit and I feel like that's kind of like translated into other things where I'm just lazy. And then at one time I literally spent $5.50 a gallon on gas and then I realized, okay, I'm gonna start checking gas prices. But literally awful. Um, but I feel like just in general, I could research a little bit more before I buy something and get a cheaper price elsewhere. When it comes down to it, I feel like I've just been lazy and I'm like, oh, I just have to pay it, so I'm gonna pay it. Um, when that isn't the case, you know another good decision I've made was diversifying my income So I have like multiple income streams and I can make an entire video on that But like from YouTube to podcast to like commission to merch to whatever whatever else it may be like sponsorships ads even on YouTube There's like four or five different branches um, But I've been able to diversify my income which not only do you make like 
can you like triple your income in a year? But there's just steady, sudden, there's steady streams coming at all different times rather than just like relying on one like source of income. So I, that was a good decision. Another bad decision I've made is subscription services. And I mean the subscription services that you're signed up for that you just keep forgetting to close and like cancel your account. So you just keep paying every single month. Like I have now learned to set them up to my PayPal because I'll notice quicker on my PayPal and I get notifications to my phone. Um, but like there's so many things that I'm like, I didn't even know I was paying that because it was so cheap, but those things add up, you know? So I think just subscription services that I didn't really even think about, always bad. There's apps too that will tell you. I don't know what apps, if you guys do comment down below, there's apps that will like tell you the subscription services that you're paying for and stuff, but yeah, it's just not good. Okay, my last actual good financial decision this may be, um, might be one that you guys don't agree with, but my DoorDash Pass. I pay $10 a month for free unlimited deliveries, and that has saved me so much time, especially in moving. Like, not that I want to be ordering food out all the time, but like life happens. So when I moved, I didn't want to like buy groceries because I was going to leave or whatever. Um, and one, I have a DoorDash code. So you guys want like free delivery and free food. Use my DoorDash code down below. But it saved me a lot of money as far as any of the fees go, as far as any of the um, actual, basically my, Meal was like the meal and tip. It wasn't even anything else. And that to me was like really, really worth it just in the sense of like entertaining and all of that. It's $10 a month. That pretty much covers two orders the entire month. So that was a good buy for me just because I know that I said like, oh, I shouldn't order food if I'm home. But sometimes when I'm working, like I would rather just spend the $10 to have food delivered to me because it saves me time and get a lot more work done because I'm making a lot more than $10 when I'm getting work done. So sometimes I do think that that is really helpful in your buying time, which is like pretty much invaluable as far as how much like work you can get done. So that's another thing. Okay, I just wanna say that the last worst financial decision is just letting people kind of take advantage of me. And I mean, I've had people in like my personal life a thousand percent, but more so just like, a lot of people take advantage of me because I'm young and upcharging and whatever that might be. I found a really good car place in LA. If you guys are in LA, the Studio City um, Firestone on Ventura is the best, 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 best Firestone in the world. And they never take advantage of me for car stuff and the cheapest oil, it's like literally the best. But just like letting people take advantage of me because I was younger and not necessarily knowing, that's why I'm trying to like, you know, actually learn this year so that, that stops. But I think that that was another you know, bad financial decision that I made and like kind of allowing myself to be because I'm, I'm, because I'm young, I don't really, really need to know this stuff. And it's like, no, 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 no. Like I should have learned it and I want to learn it as the time comes, you know? Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I love you guys so much. Um, subscribe if you guys are new here. Follow me on Instagram, all that stuff. I also have a podcast. It's called the I Love You So Much Podcast. Available everywhere where podcasts are available. Link is always down below. It's a lifestyle podcast. So you guys will really like it if you like my videos. But I love you guys so much and I'll see you guys soon.